maps. So it's, there's no doubt that they were ready for this, but you've just got to think at what point do they go, this is really tiring, the mistakes start to come through, and that those two maps advantage, if you will, that Space Station have got on them at this stage that they've not played, that may come into play as well. Yeah, fatigue is always definitely a factor in a best of three series. But we're going to go through Space Station, ban out the glass, or glass, ban out the ash. Interesting. That may be a target ban against Rampy. Uh, Rampy's been doing some great work with the ash, like you've commented on in Clubhouse. Um, you know, good rank player, good ash player. It seems to go hand in hand. Definitely, definitely. So we are going to get through into the last couple of bans here. Space Station are going to be out the final defender here. Probably going to be Mirror. No, it's a Valkyrie. So Mirror's actually on the board for this one. This is definitely very interesting. You very rarely see a coastline that actually has a Mirror up and ready. I'm actually going to be the ban out coming here. So it's going to be Echo up as well. This is definitely going to be very interesting going into round number one. All will start on the attack. Some would argue that Orglus have the advantage here because they are starting out on the attack. I would say that goes two ways because, yes, Coastline traditionally, maybe not so much recently, but traditionally is an attacker side of the map. And on the other flip side of that as well, sometimes as well, when you're, you're taking the side first, you want to go into a winning side on your second half. You, want to, you don't want to start out on a winning side because then you go into the losing side, right? Maybe that's more prevalent on maps like Clubhouse. Need to than it is and as many bombs yeah, I kind of can. understand what you're saying. I think that I guess the SSG having the last ban and choosing not to ban the mirror really speaks to what they're going to try and do here, and they're really going to try and chain these defensive rounds together. They've got no reason why they can't because the mirror play on coastline is so huge that it makes a lot of sense for them to be able to, you know, get some rounds together and then just kind of deal with that on there on their attacking rounds when it flips over to Orglus and they're able to bring them there as well. So we might see a little bit of Twitch play coming out um, with that being available if uh, if that's like a, a targeted thing that, or a very well considered thing, should I say, that SSG are doing. Yeah, and also don't forget, just as a quick reminder, stats-wise, Space Station Gaming have won Coastline once during this qualifier and Orglus have yet to win it. So. Very interesting coming out from them. We'll see how exactly it's going to go down. As Space Station Gaming start out on the defense here, and Orglus, they're looking to fight back. They're looking to try and take the series through. Let's see how exactly that's going to work out for them as they move through onto the DJ booth and see exactly what setup they can go for here. What do you think of the lineup, sir? I think that, I think, I like it. I think it's good. Something that is nice to see is the Jackal because although it's not a huge map, and it's very sort of circular in its rotation with it having obviously the big courtyard in the middle. The Jackal can be really handy to get a good track on anyone that's causing themselves a nuisance over in uh, Aquarium or Billiards area. I feel like Yeti opening that long angle toward Theatre, it could do them more harm than good. It's quite fortunate that SSG hasn't actually brought an ACOG there because sitting on that angle with an ACOG in Theatre looking onto the IP wall can be devastating. There's also no mirror there. He put both of the mirrors facing from theater into penthouse. So normally, sometimes you know teams will play that hallway mirror, and you can peek off of it into that kill hole you just made. So if there was a mirror there, it would have been kind of bad and would have acted against you. But I think that opening up that 90 hallway is actually very, very good. And it's a good angle to play for rotate if there's no mirror there, and that's exactly what we're going to be able to do. Thinking they already throwing out two smokes very early on. It's going to smoke out whoever's in the bathroom there. I believe it is Big Bry himself, as we'll see exactly how that's going to work out for him. But that is already a huge amount of utility off the board for SSG. He's also eating up a lot of Brian's health there, so I'm not sure if the trade-off's worth it or not. I think it's more likely going to come down to frags and C4s to deny the uh, to deny the plant in the final few seconds, and maybe it's better off to use the smoke grenades just as a little bit of crowd control at that point. Bosco is so close to picking up that kill, and my man is going to peek out, which is going to allow Bosco to jump out and get a kill onto Crazy, but not before Rampy gets one of his own. So very quickly the tide has turned. And now it's looking very good for SSG as Acid drops the bathroom hatch and manages to make his way on into the site. But he's not got all too much that he can do with it. He's going to have to go behind the bed and uh, Pulse is going to be waiting in, in, in wait below, thinking they're picking up a kill onto Brian Acid. Trading it straight back out. One versus four now. He's got a heck of a lot of work to do and he's getting pressure from downstairs. The diffuser is not in his hand. So 
he's not really looking in a very good position at the minute. He's going to have to go for frags. There's a mirror that there's still a defender playing off, which is really bad for him at this point as he tries to make his way over into theatre. He does manage to pick up one kill, but Rampy on the pulse is going to make him suffer with a nitro from below. I'm amazed this nitro didn't destroy the shield because it was right there and he took whatever. Uh, anyway, we're going to move through into round number two and uh, yeah, great stuff coming out from Space Station. I really think that this was win and loss because Thinking Nade is throwing out the smokes too early, which means now Space Station have to get very aggressive. And Bosco does just, just that. I like how my man, he's playing below. He's trying to get his entrance into into uh, kitchen service entrance. And he's bobbing and dipping and diving and dodging wherever he can. QEC spam, that's how it's just how it goes as the book main. And Bosco just kills him. He doesn't even care. He's just holding the angle. And that is how you play against QEC spammer. You just shoot where they're going to be, not where they are. And then they go. Bosco did really well for that. Picked up two kills as well from that. And it all just kind of went pear-shaped. Yeah, that's, were... that's a very British term. Pear-shaped, pear yeah, I think yeah. it is. <laughs> I don't even know why it is. I think it might be because a pear looks like it's like splitting, perhaps, at the bottom. I, I don't for the NA viewers who don't know what pear-shaped means, yeah. it's kind of like uh, it all, it's all gone wrong. It's all gone, it's all gone wrong. It's not, it's not going very well. But yeah, definitely a little bit of a, a little bit of British thing. Now. Yeah, not apple shaped, definitely pear shaped round coming out from Ogles there. As we go into round number two, we're going to see a billiards defense coming out here from Space Station. What do we think of the lineup? I'm kind of surprised, but not in a massive way that there's no mirror here. I think the the mirror doesn't provide maybe as much value as the castle doors or maybe even the dock. I'm not sure what you'd switch it out for at this point. Yeah, that's true. I think that's the that's the thing. It's because because of mirrors in such a high ban rate, teams have really become quite creative in dealing with sites without her. And there almost becomes a point where it's just better to play it as you would normally without the mirror than to risk bringing it. And I mean, we've seen already tonight how devastating it can be if you lose control of a mirror, heaven forbid. Um, so it really does sort of can play against you sometimes. We've got Bosco is uh, is going to be aware there from Ping that the main castle is getting opened, and that's going to allow a clean line of sight into the objective. But of course, it does waste a set of Xkaros, which would have been very handy to use to open up VIP wall, which is reinforced uh, into corridor, which then looks on into the objective. But I guess that can still be done with uh, with at least one set that. Um, Brian has got left in his back pocket. Yeah, and there's there's still plenty of utility from both sides here to remain through, but that's going to be a massive amount of utility off the board already. Charlotte, all the way from Cool Vibes, is going to pick Yeti off the board so early on. That is a massive pick coming down. Was he on the purple curtain? I'm pretty sure he was. Oh, stood on the yeah, I know what you mean where you jump up onto the roof, yeah. get onto the get onto the ledge, yeah. Um, but it'd be an odd place for a smoke to be playing. I mean, he's got his nades that he can use from there, but he's removing a lot of his utility. You know, he's, he's not really got anything that he can hammer out there, I guess. Maybe um, it would have been better to see him repel up and hammer off the, the castle on main window and just get a little bit of the utility out that way. Uh, but it looks as though Jackal's got a good ping on someone playing over in VIP. I can't help but think at this point. Oh, it does look as though. Sorry, I was. I didn't realise that August had actually got control of Aquarium. I was going to say that the control that they've got doesn't really seem to be doing them all too much, but they've got full control of Aquarium, and they're just waiting for this push to come in. Thinking Nade with a toxic bait in his hand, all three with the final minute, and he's going to go for the corner there. The Nade's going to come through from my man, perfectly timed, taking out Redeemer. That's going to be Legion out of the picture. Thinking they there picking up a kill onto Crazy. Another Toxic Bay into the corner. Rampy kill of his own. Two versus four. Brian's going to fall as well to Thinking they All now down to my man. He's got a Legion mine in his foot. And Charlotte is going to pick up that final kill. Space Station are taking no prisoners with two quick rounds back to back on defense. Very well played by Space Station. Uh, some people might be confused. Maybe some not that experienced in watching comp play. Uh... And this happens more in North America than other regions. But I would say uh, when Thinking Nade is smoking out, he's he's putting the smoke in the corner and people maybe not understanding why he's doing that. But that actually does go through the corner and it does damage whoever's planting on the bomb. That's completely legal to do in ESL. So no issues there from Space Station doing that. It's become a more and more common strategy to do. And it's definitely very hard to deal with. It's impossible to deal with. I wouldn't say it's impossible because you can still kill the smoke. And you can go below, and we saw Attack it was attempted to go down because there were nades below. So 
and you know he has to sit there to do it. It's yeah. If he's in that position and he's able to throw it, there's no. Like, it's, it's a great play on his behalf. Like you, you could tell. I knew what he was doing in, in throwing the smokes into the corner, but Jammer. I've never really paid all that much attention to how much the smoke affects the other side. I think I'm guessing it's in that really. It's in the default plan spot, straight behind the yeah. bomb, and it just hits that perfectly. So it's a it's a great use of the utility, um, and like you say, very difficult yeah, to deal with. All that you're able to do is actually kill the smoke, like you say. Um, aside from that, you're really stuck. So, but SSG taking absolutely no prisoners so far. They're on a bit of a storm at the minute. Two rounds back to back on defence. But don't be fooled. This is something that we have seen before this evening. We've seen SSG go on little streaks. We've seen all let's go on little streaks of, uh, of chaining rounds together but it doesn't really mean anything at this point because we know this is going to be as close a map as all the others have been what's going wrong for Orglis here let's let's get right down into the business why is Orglis two rounds down I really don't know at this point I think that they've suffered on the on the first on the right okay so the first round um, it was I believe Rampy playing downstairs, who picked up the 2k. Yep. Firstly on to um, Matman, who was playing Book, and then was able to go, go out and get the kill uh, on to uh, Bosco, who was playing Kishisosu. Was it Bosco? Whoever it was that got the 2k downstairs, one, one in the killing service, and then the, the run-out kill on to the guy on Repel, that was just so crucial on that round because they lost all the control they'd gained from the repelled guy, being able to keep pressure onto theatre. That was definitely a key reason as to why they won round one. Um, uh, winning round two, I think the smoke play was great. They gave away a lot of control, but they managed to keep hold of VIP, which kept guys safe. There was a couple of nice picks that came out. But I don't know what August needs to do all too differently at this point. I think there was a base, bit of wasted utility coming out from them. You mentioned about how Sledge could probably go around and open up the main window. Habana charges went down on that uh, Billiards window and opened up that way instead. Potentially Sledge could have kept it there, but a lot of it just seems to come down to the fact that Orglis are consistently losing gunfights and losing a lot of control and utility because of it. Because they're not trading frags that well. Yeah, and even though they had the jackal pings on people and... Ooh, there we go. Yeti is going to pick up a nice opener there onto Thinking Nade taking smoke and he's going to make that a double taking out Chala as well. Is this going to be a triple? It is! He's going to find the head of Redeemer quickly. Five versus two. No need for trades this time. They're going to clean sweep this round. My man's going to take out Rampy. Bosco now is going to be the last man standing. Finds the head of my man, but the plant has gone down in the process. He's left upstairs. He's all too aware that there's going to be a lot of people playing down in Sunrise, but there's not all too much that he can do about it at this point. Look at all these goo mines, they're all over VIP, but it's just not been pushed at all. He's getting shots now from the top of Hooker deck. He's got a very tall order to be able to get onto this diffuser. There's already half of the timer gone. There's four men left on the attacking team. He's in a very, very tricky position here. He's going to peek out onto the Hibana of Bry. He's going to make a full run to try and get that kill. At this point, he's got to just be playing for frags. He's picked up the kill onto Brian, but he knows that there's not a, help, not a lot of time left. And the attackers are playing very recklessly because of that, because they know as well there's not a lot of time left. He picks up a kill onto Acid, but it won't mean anything at this point. Yeti getting the final one. Orglis there, showing a little bit more speed, a little bit more aggression, and really taking that round and seeing an opportunity, getting the plant down, and getting the round on the board. That was 100% Yeti with the 4K, but yeah. not only just that, but three opening kills pretty much immediately. He just sees the opportunity, he sees where they're all rotating through, and he just holds it really, really well. The thing about refragging as well is if the the other team know where you're about to trade from, then you can just be an easy pre-fire, and I think Yeti just really looked into that, he was doing really well. That was a disaster for Space Station, though, losing that many operators that early on. It was almost just like, don't peek. Attackers need to locate and defuse that was, I was, when he picks up the third, before he picks up the third kill, I was like, surely not. It, the, the, surely we're not going to peak that again because you just know that yet yeah, he's literally trained onto it at this yeah. point. Um, but, you know, it's, it's only one round. It does allow uh, SSG to go back upstairs into Penthouse and, you know, try the look there. They defended this very successfully last time. Rampy had a storm playing downstairs uh, on the pulse, as did Bosco with the run out kill like we've talked about already. Um, so I, I, I wouldn't be worried if I was on the team of SSG, but I really think that Orglus have seen an opportunity and taken full advantage of it there in that last round. Definitely. So we're going to move through into round number four. 
the space station game. We'll see exactly how this is going to go through for them. This is looking pretty good for them so far. Maybe some people looking at this and going, I know I'm, I'm attempt attacking this random person who's being very overcritical, but I can feel it from here. And I can feel the anger. And I'm saying that coastline, even though traditionally attack aside, yes, and now space station have found rounds on the defense, that is not the end of the story. You really have to wait until the first half is over to really judge what is actually going on here. But it is good that Space Station are finding rounds here. And I think a lot of it is coming down to this mirror play. Yeah, I mean, we can see Acid here pretty much predicting that mirror play perfectly and, uh, and having the Twitch drone ready to deal with any of that. But he's obviously pretty anxious about deploying that into the corridor and risking that being shot. If he can, if he's able to open any of these mirrors, that's going to be huge for August at this point. But the Mute Jammers are going to be doing their job and maybe going to even have to wait for a Thatcher to get that open at that point. It could just be too late into the round and they may have to start focusing elsewhere on the chance that he may not actually get that, uh, that mirror window open. Yeah, he's definitely trying to move in here and just see that there is a mute jammer there. So he's not finding that particular situation too useful for him. I'm hoping he's waiting for the Thatcher to rotate around to try and do that for him. And then he can open up his mirrors. But at this point, you have a bug. I'm not sure why my man hasn't rotated below. Maybe it's because of the threat from the hatch or the threat from Rome is still going on. But there we go. The mirror windows get opened up. So that's actually really good. I'm pretty sure that was from the drone. Yeah, that must have been from the drone. Because he just got both of them open. So really well played there. Charlotte there playing pretty aggressively up onto the Hibana hole as well. I think at this point he's just got to peek something because everybody knows where he is. And if he can get a kill, then even better. But he's just going to take some shots into his back there. He's going to be on about 20 health. Rampy playing downstairs, playing very patiently. He's already seen somebody there, but he's missed the guy at double door. My man holding the angle does manage to take out Pulse. This is looking pretty good at this stage for August. Having said that, Shala is going to get a nice kill on the long angle onto Hall of Fame as uh, that's going to be Jackal that's pushing through. So we're going to lose a little bit of smokes on the team of August there, which is going to uh, it's going to make it a little bit more difficult for them to push in. But the mirror's now being opened. That shield there deployed perfectly. Bosco picking up the kill onto Acid, getting traded straight back out by Brian. Still got a player repelled on the window, and that's going to cause a heck of a lot of problems if the members of... Uh, August do manage to get the plant down because it's going to cause SSG to have to rotate through. Brian is now getting that plant down as he knows that the pulse is no longer a fact. And my man picking up the kill onto Chala. Thinking they'd get him one back onto my man. All of a sudden this is a two versus one effectively. I do believe that Redeemer is down. Thinking they'd go in for the revive though. He's definitely got the time. And he actually had the cover of the smoke grenades. It's going to be a very difficult retake from here. Brian there managing to find the head of Thinking Nade all down to Redeemer. He does manage to find the down. He's going to reload the, uh, the SMG 11 and see if he can find the remaining final kill onto, I believe it is Yeti. He's going to be playing all the way over in VIP. He does actually manage to get there. Is he going to be able to make this diffuse stick? I'm not sure if Yeti is going to have the angle there from the Hibana hole to get the kill. I don't think that Yeti's got the angle. He's going to make the diffuse stick. That's going to be a great clutch there from Space Station Gaming. He in the defuse and yet he just too far away to do anything about the post plan yet he knows that his teammate's down i just don't understand why he's taking such a long angle outside of dj maybe he's hoping to catch redeemer on the cross maybe he's hoping that redeemer will just peek out red or something like that but what a massive mistake coming out from yes and i'm sure he's going to be beating himself up about that one but yeah, they had that in the bag and they just completely threw it away. It's such a shame because I feel like August's execution of that was really good. Yeah. They, they did they a did really, really, well. really good job of dealing with every okay, element of SSG's defense. They took the mirror windows out. They were able to get rid of Rampy on the pulse below. They were, they were just picking kills. They had the guy that was securely playing on the window without fear of being run out on because my man was playing downstairs in main lobby. It was just so well executed that it, they really deserved that round. And it's just so unfortunate that, yeah, he didn't catch him on the cross because I think if he catched... Well, I think that was his plan. I think his plan was to catch him on the cross. And then it was like a question of... Is he diffusing or is he wait? Is he thinking I'm pushing and there's a bit of doubt there? And it was just that few seconds of doubt that just really, it just cost him. But, you know, 
You can't argue with Rampy for jumping on the defuse. Uh, sorry, Redeemer for jumping on the refuse, uh, the, the defuser, can you? You got there eventually. You got there yeah, eventually. Definitely, you can't blame him for that at all. Redeemer will take the round. This is looking like an increasingly bad situation for Ogles. It is not like they're playing badly at all. It's just small moments. I will say, however, that Ogles have done really well recently to collapse in on space stations. Um, they're like baiting Not out the refrags and the uh, rotates that are coming through quite well. And it seems like Space Station kind of have big tunnel vision of uh, when they're going for refrags. That, uh, they don't really have big information about what's going on in the greater world. Uh, the refrags have been coming in pretty thick and fast. Rampy, they're going to pick up a nice opener onto Yeti. So Thatcher is no more. Um, that could prove a bit of a problem if any mute jammers need to be removed and Ass is looking at getting his Twitch drone through because I think opening the Twitch, opening the mirror windows last time were pretty crucial as to you know how successful the push actually did come out for Orglus. Um, but yeah, I mean, the, like you see there, there was no refrag there from um, Orglus onto onto Rampy from that kill. It was it was kind of a freebie for him, and he's been able to rotate off that, hold an angle down onto Sunrise, and he's just keeping uh, Shala safe there on uh, on Cool Vibe stairs. Yeah, definitely doing very very well indeed. Uh, I'm wondering if there's a is, if he's playing cool vibes, is there an ADS on cool vibes? Can we see that for a second at all? But, uh, I mean, yeah, this is good for Massey. He's going to get all the way in here. There is a mirror on the board this time, which may be the saving grace here for SSG. I'm not sure, because these mirrors went down very, very early before, and, I mean, this was all Assy last time. So, we'll see how he does do with that. We'll see multiple drones still coming out. My man is also going to rotate below, and it's like he's going to be able to nade out from below here as well. Ah, he doesn't get it. He doesn't manage to see where this is going down, but this was the big problem last time from Orglus, that my man went below and he killed the wrong man. He should have been trying to kill Thinking Nade because he completely destroyed this, but this time they're just going to push all the way in, and this push is going to be very good for Orglus. They're going to push all the way in and get a lot of control here as the planet starts to go down. Thinking Nade is going to try and smoke it out and see what he can do here. As there we go, Brian's going to do down to Rampy on the flank. And the fuser is dropped in Aquarium, but there we go, Crazy my man. both going to pick up kills for themselves. It's now a 2v2, all between Bosco and Thinking Nade, but as I say that, Crazy takes off Thinking Nade. And now it's all down to Bosco in a 1v2. Let's see how he does it. He's going to be holding on to there, but there we go, he does take down my man. He has control of the diffuser, and it's all down to Crazy to try and bring this in. He goes for the pre fires he's got to know where Bosco is, but Bosco's got the a code, but he's not going to be looking behind him. There we go, Crazy does pick him up for free. All just take round number five. That's really unfortunate there. I think that Bosco thought that he was playing over on Cool Vibe Way. He didn't realize that he'd already come in behind. Um, but a good round there, nonetheless. Did come down to one versus one, but we are seeing this is very, very close here. Two rounds to three, currently in favor of SSG. And they're going to opt to go back up to Hooker Lounge and Billiards Room. Um, it certainly makes a lot of sense to go there. They've only lost there once. They won there the other time they went. It came down to a one versus one. It was pretty close in the final few seconds of that round. Um, so it certainly makes a lot of sense to go back down there. And you can see that we're going to switch out the pulse onto an echo this time. Um, not seeing an echo yet on this Defenders bomb site, I don't believe. Could help a little bit with relieving a little bit of the pressure off Thinking Nade with that smoke that he's been trying to play in that corner. Um, because it seems as though... August doing a very good job of trying to deal with that now with my, uh, my man going underneath the using book, trying to use the grenades to sort of root thinking nade out of that spot. Well, I think, yeah, but they did that last time. Um, well, the time before that, when they did attack and they didn't lose it. I think the problem came down with there, with Space Station, is that last time they managed to pick everyone who pushed through there. This time, Oglus pushed through all together at the same time and just traded off each other. And they did so well to get control of the site so early on. Attackers same castles coming down. I just, I'm not sure if I really agree with these castles, but at the same time, I don't really agree with the way that Oglus is taking it because they're putting a Havana charges down onto the the door and they're putting it down onto the billiards window. They're gonna do the same thing again for Brian. I feel like they should just rotate around and open up the backside of Billiards if they want to deal with that smoke. Yeah, if they went onto the roof and they were able to use the Hibana pellets onto that, that'd make no, a heck no. of a lot of sense. 
I guess the only thing that you'd... Well, it's the same problem they're facing now, I guess. They're going to have to get the factory grenade to uh, the factory pop an EMP over there, but they're having to do that now for the mute jammers anyway. So you're right, it really doesn't make too much difference, and especially when you've got um, both Buck with the grenade and Zafir with the lifeline that are going to be able to deal with the castle. It just seems like maybe a small waste of utility. Um, but, I mean, that just got breaching charges. Like, breaching charges are perfect for getting rid of the castles. Yeah, well, not if they're jammed. But he's Thatcher. That is true. That is true. He is Thatcher. He can use his EMP. He can do he anything. He's allowed to do that. He could do anything you want. Thatcher's OP. Definitely. So, we are going to see just about halfway through the round now, and we're going to see how it's going to go down. But we see drones are going to start coming out from Orgulus all across the board as they get control of Aquarium. So it's starting to look like they're going to go for the exact same push they did last time. Space Station did not do well to shut this down. I think a lot of it did come down to good fighting, but a lot of it also came down to the fact that they were kind of all over the place and that Thinking Nade's position was heavily compromised, both from the book be from below, but also from the people pushing all the way up into his face. Yeah, I mean, look at the angle that Hibana's holding there onto uh, luggage. It, it's Oh, there's definitely someone just the other side of that shield, but Chala is not going to see him. He's going to go into his camera and get killed by Yeti. Yeti just crouch walking all the way in. He manages to pick up another onto Redeemer before Bosco shuts him down. Bosco has got the Stim Pistol in hand. He's juiced himself up to above 100. Thinking Nade now coming out with a kill onto Crazy. Switching over onto the shotgun. Doesn't manage to pick up the kill onto Acid as Acid there just aggressively peeks out onto Bosco. But Rampy is going to pick that up through the wall. Brian's got the diffuser in hand but he's going to have a hard job trying to plant it now. Having said that, Rampy is on the prowl, but there's somebody coming up behind him on the cool vibe stairs, and I'm not sure if he's aware that that's where it's coming from. Is Rampy going to be able to pick up that kill? He knows he's got the diffuser down at this point, 25 seconds left on the clock. He may have intel in the bomb site that's going to enable him to make this push at just the right time. He's coming back into VIP door. He knows that the plant is going down at this point. He may even be able to hear it. He's going to pre-fire and he is going to get that kill. That's a great clutch from Rampy, just taking himself out of the fight. I think I imagine he was maybe playing off information there from an echo drone, but I could be wrong. But very good game sense and perfect push. That's exactly what Space Station needed at this point. Yeah, exactly what Rampy should have done in that situation. But overall, kind of a weird round for Space Station because they had decent intel on the site and they had decent intel onto what was going on in the hallway. And Chala knew that. Chala knew what was going on because he checked the cam and he saw they were about to get pushed from VIP. But he thought that Yeti was going to play it a lot more passively than he did. He was up on him immediately, and Charlotte was completely caught by surprise. Yeti gets two kills. That should not be allowed to happen when they have intel. Yeti's done that a couple of times this evening, and not just against SSG, but he's done it against Rise as well, where he just kind of crouch walks his way in and just gets away with it. Yeti may be the best crouch walker of our time. I think he's got some sort of like ninja slipper. Mm. He doesn't just press crouch, he, he like puts his ninja slippers on and he's yep. able to really make no noise. Defender, um, your bomb but, I mean, joking aside, he's, I'm not sure if it's like, it's just like a heightened game sense and like an understanding of what's going to actually happen and what that player is likely to do in that situation. And he's able to just crouch walk in and really take advantage of that. And it, it, it does work for him. Definitely. So, moving into round number seven then. And we can see Orglis now on the defense. We've not seen Blue Bar Sunrise Bar uh, before. Also, I want to point out as well, a lot of people call Sunrise Sunset. It's not called Sunset. These suns are not setting. They are rising. I just want to point that out. It's very annoying when people call it Sunset. Um, uh, sunset, Sunrise. This is where I go into ranked after this and people start calling it Sunset immediately when they see me. I might start calling it Sunset just well, for you, go. but... Um, no, we, we have seen Blue Bar, we saw it in round three, August won it on attack. Um, so it is doable on attack. It was the round where um, they just took really good control early on. I think, was it when Yeti jumps in and got a 3k? Yeah. I think it was that one. Um, yeah, he jumps into, into Sunrise. Sunrise window. Yeah. Not Sunset window. Um, but yeah, it's definitely doable. It's an interesting pick, to be honest, for August to come out for their first round of uh, defense to choose. Maybe a little bit bold. 
they've obviously got an idea of what they want to do. They're going to be playing the, you know, the almost typical mirror castle arrangement down there, which is going to allow them to keep a nice line of sight onto outside kitchen corridor. Um, and it's also going to allow them a good amount Attackers of protection from the, the castles. But thinking Nade is well equipped with the book to uh, take some upstairs control and make sure that he can get things open to uh, gain some lines of sight down and on into sight. Yeah, you should be able to do that fairly effectively moving through, but moving further into round number seven's action phase now, we already see one frag go down just about. Yeti does need to go down. Doesn't get confirmed just yet, down but not out. He could actually get revived. He is actually fairly safe right now. As also Jones coming out from SSG to try and see if they can confirm this kill. But the reinforcements actually go down. Oh my god. That is like 1 million IQ, but the nades come out. There's an ADS there! Oh my god! There's no way Yeti survives this. Loading mag. That is absurd. He's still down. He's not going to have a hell of a lot of time to play with. He's sitting there at about a quarter or so of his bar left. Bosco there. That's a really good example from SSG about really not rushing the kill. They were almost baiting it to a point where they were hoping that someone was going to maybe try and come up and revive him. But ultimately, they were just patient and able to pick up that kill. It's took them quite a bit of time to get to where they are right now, but I think they're probably in a very good position to be able to start opening up the floor, making some lines of sight, and putting some pressure down onto the remaining defenders downstairs. Yeah, definitely going to be moving away where they can. Orgles in a bit of a 4v5 situation, but not only that, we've got Thinking Nade on the book, and he's above and his coastline. This is the disaster situation we were talking about just before the game started. This is what you wanted to see. This is everything that you were wishing for, thinking they on the book, and, and now you've got it, and he's going to be able to show his full capabilities opening up that sunrise floor, uh, or sunrise ceiling, should I say, as the, uh, the capital bolts come in. Oh, Acid just narrowly missing out a kill onto Shala, but does get a C4, which gets a heck of a lot of damage. Three kills come out in quick succession. There's your kills from thinking they picking up two back to back. Crazy. Last man alive, Bosco, shutting him down from outside in the courtyard. Great execute there from SSG, I feel. They set themselves up perfectly for that, thinking they're picking up a great double at the same time as another kill coming through as well. You really can't argue with that kind of preparation for Yeah, it's great as well because they force Acid out of position using the Capital Bolt from outside. And then so he has to come through. He knows someone's pushing pool entrance still, probably. So he throws a Nitro out there. He just wasted his utility for basically no reason. And then he rotates to where he thinks he's safe, but oh no, here comes Thinking Nade. As I said, Afro, 200 IQ plays. It is hiding that humongous brain of his as we move into round number eight. And again, we haven't seen thinking in on the book. And he's just so horrible to deal with on the book. And especially on a map like Coastline, what do you do against it? You have to kill him. You can't get let him get vertical play. And they're still coming downstairs as well. This makes it even worse. It's, there's certainly some off choices on bomb site coming out of Morbus. Not really going with what you would expect, I guess. Uh, it, or, or even what worked quite well for SSG Attack on their defensive rounds, like they were pretty successful in both billiards and penthouse. But to see them come downstairs twice, like you say, when they know they're against someone like Thinking Nade, who's just got that ability on the book, unless they're gonna hold upstairs really hard, and they're gonna hold VIP, and they're gonna hold penthouse and theatre, they're gonna have a really tough time. If that control is let, you know, if they let that control go fairly early on into the round, I think the SSG are just going to be able to tear them Attackers apart from that. The Attackers objective is should be pretty bomb. good indeed. Let's see round number 8 getting underway. And see exactly how Space Station want to try and take this on their attack. After really coming off a very successful attack. And they're already up 5-2. I think, honestly, this was the kind of scoreline that I was expecting. I'm not sure about you. Just with the way that SSG has been playing. And I think Coastline benefits them a lot. We were talking about how Orglus took them to a map where... It's kind of, they, they've been playing it, playing Oregon, it's very, very linear. We are talking about that. We talked about how maybe Orgles can play against SSG's superior strategy with just pure frag power from them. And they can just try and push it out like that in a linear map. And that's kind of how they did Oregon. Now we're in a much more complicated map. And now we're starting to see Space Station's arguably superior prep coming out in a much better way. This, there's more that you can do in terms of preparation, I think, in Coastline, in terms yeah. of things that can be opened up. Um, I mean, you look at Oregon and you look at Laundry, it's really heavily favoured. 
Um, oh, Rampy, they're going to lose a heck of a lot of damage. But it's, I can't believe they managed to make that peek and stay alive without losing his life. It really looks as though he should have. He's definitely one bullet for most guns at this point. Ryan there is going to narrowly miss out, but he is going to pick up the kill with the area of effect that is the Toxic Bay. That's going to be Rampy off the board. A good pick to get at that stage, you're going to lose some of the lifelines, and the lifelines are going to be able to tell you where people are in the site. So you might be able to find out if Ramp if, uh, if we've got Brian on the smoke playing behind the bomb or something like that. You're going to be able to discover that that's now no longer going to be a factor. But as we were discussing, upstairs control looks to be largely well established. I'm thinking Nade is uh, he's pretty much used all of his skeleton key there opening up in Penthouse and uh, he's going to open up a couple now into VIP, but I think that's pretty much all he's got in terms of ammunition in that. Um, I would have maybe liked to see him open up a bit more of VIP, but I think he's possibly just trying to make Brian feel a bit uncomfortable. Yeah, definitely, but Brian's not going to be uncomfortable. He's going to be perfectly comfortable there, holding at his angle. Just take down Redeemer. That's already losing your capital. It's not great. Bosco does, however, find a kill onto Acid. That's the duck down. That's not a huge kill, but it is utility off the board in some way. Thinking Nade from above, however, is going to start doing work. That goes my man. And now it's a 3v3. Looking much, much better for Space Station to go for their execute. But they don't really have the necessary utility for this. But they do have upstairs control, and they have the ability to push all the way in. Bosco takes down Yeti. And this is looking much, much better. There we go. Chala takes down Brian. And all of a sudden, it's down to crazy in a 1v3. The plant should start to come down. So you're not rather than later. Crazy just peeks all the way out. Does manage to win the fight against Bosco. He tries to go huge, but he takes out the pistol. There goes Chala. Oh my god, it's a 1v1. But there we go. Thanking Nate saves the round. Big brain book player coming through. Does save his space station and put themselves onto map and match point overall. We're one round away. Thinking Nate picking up the pieces there. It was so close. That would have been a great clutch. I think that would have been the clutch of the night if it had, if it had come through. Space Station, you are one round away from sending yourselves to the Invitational. You have Thinking Nade on the book. You're on Coastline. You have not lost an attack round yet. Everything is in your favor. But you, this is where it all starts to go wrong. Because now, yes, he's had enough. He's picking the Rook. We're seeing the dock from Acid. We're seeing the Cox. I was really disappointed in that six pick, but it's <laughs> I was really hoping that Oglus was just going to say, you know what, Attackers let's just get aggressive. Let's just pick the ACOGs. Let's just can. peek out. We're not winning this off of strategy. We're winning this off of gunfights. What do you think the odds are on Yeti going for a spawn peek? If I was a betting man, I would put it at three to two. Do you want me to tell you why I think it's high? Purely because... It's match point. Well, not only that, but usually you see Yeti on the dock. Now, Doc loses a lot more utility if he dies from a spawn peak than Rook. Rook can put his armor down at the start of the round. You guys have got it. That's it. It's not the end of the world. I don't think he's doing it because there's seven seconds left. And unless he's running to the window at the top of Black Stairs. No. No. Go on, please. Please do it. He's going for it. Let's go. I was definitely hoping for this, that Yeti would just start getting more aggressive. I don't think he's going to find anyone here, just because... That's so unfortunate. The way that Space Station should be pushing is not being that way. So I'm kind of confused why he's holding that angle, but... It's unfortunate. He went for it. It didn't work. We're going to move past him. He's going to shoot the plate in frustration. Bit rude. Someone owns that plate, you know? It's a clock. It's a plate clock. <sighs> So, we're going to move through, it's going to be match point to Space Station, of course, and Yeti is going to be opening up some angles for himself here. Yeti's very, very dangerous on an ACOG, and we've already seen his striking potential be realized uh, on pretty, you know, multiple times in him crouch walking to sight, obviously. But he's a man who can consistently win gunfights, and that is something that is worth quite a bit, especially if you're playing an ACOG. He just establishes such a good foothold for himself that he's able to play off it. And he really just sort of owns an area that he can peek multiple angles from. And like you say, we've seen it time and time again this evening where he just able to get, he's able to get himself in like a bit of a power position almost and then just play off it. Shots there coming into the Redeemer doesn't quite manage to make anything really... Well, I guess he managed to make a bit connect with Yeti, but Redeemer certainly came off worse in that engagement. But we're seeing like Roman Rook at the minute. Yeti's 
all over the map at this stage. He's been absolutely everywhere. But I like this angle that he's playing now over from luggage side. And he's already made some holes pre-placed in VIP wall, which is going to allow him to peek on into that a little bit easier. And maybe even shoot off all those Hibana charges, although I do think they've just been detonated. Here they do get a detonator, but yet he does find the first kill of the round. There goes Bosco already. And there's the smokes off the board, but not all of them. We still have the Capital, so it's not the end of the world. And there go flashbangs coming out from Charlotte, and he's going to be able to try and get this mirror window. The drones are going to start coming out, of course, from Charlotte to see if the plant is safe and they have control. Just about a minute left to go on the clock. This all of a sudden isn't looking that great for SSG. Yes, they have the utility, yes, they have the potential to plant, but they haven't really done that much work on the actual defenders themselves. The plant is going to start coming down from Charla, but there we go with the Nitro! Oh, that's a beautiful Nitro from Aston. He just sends Charla flying. And now they don't have any. Aston picks up another kill as well. There goes Redeemer. And now all of a sudden, Space Station finds themselves in a 5v2. But there we go. Thinking Nade takes down Crazy. Now it's a 4v2. They're trying to work it back. And they're doing so, so well to try and even the scoreboard out here. But they're running out of time. They're running out of patience. And they're running out of opportunities as Rampy does go down as well. And now it's all down to Thinking Nade. He's going to try and think about this Nade and jumps in while throwing a Nade at the same time. Moves all the way in, tries to recover Rampy, but goes down. Brian with a double kill right at the end. Uh, Orglus take round number nine and are still keeping themselves in this. This is going to be so frustrating for Space Station. It's just relentless, isn't it? Space Station get themselves to the point where they're within... They can, they can taste it, you know, they can smell it. And Orglus just come out with a really, really well executed round. And I think Yeti played a really big role in that, in the way that he roamed around as the dock. I know he went for a bit of a reckless start in the spawn peak, but that kind of worked that it didn't work because he was then able to, you know, move off that. He opened the holes in VIP wall, which were, he were able to play off later. Um, and he only got killed in the... I think he was one of the last defenders yeah. to die in VIP. So he, he played his life absolutely perfectly. Um but SSG really didn't deal with any sort of any of the defenders in any such way, and there's only there's only a very slim chance of it of an attack working if you're just going to try and brute force your way through Hall of Fame door as as like a three man push. Attackers need to locate and defuse. Orglus, however, in a bit of an uphill battle now, and they will go back down to kitchen surface entrance defense. This was insanely close, but very surprisingly so because it was a one v three. It shouldn't have been as close as it was because it did come down to a 1v1 and then thinking they saved the round. But uh, yeah, I think Bosco's had enough of it, in my opinion, if you see the operator he's playing here. BB. Bosco defined Blackbeard back in the day. And you can tell Space Station have quite had enough of Orglus' games. They're not allowing them to peek off heavily. They're not going to allow them to play aggressively. They're going to Montreal. They don't care what you're doing, Orglus. They're going to shut you down as soon as you try and get anywhere near aggressive. Let's see how it does go down. Space Station within one round of securing the series. Let's see how they take it down. Let's see indeed. I'm sure that they're going to, uh, you know, they're at the point now where they really don't want to let too many rounds slip because we've seen what happens when they do that. And the you know it's very very easy to lose control over a match and when you've got a couple of rounds advantage yeah you can make a few more riskier plays but ultimately you've still got to make sure that you're doing the basics and you're winning the gunfights and i think ssg now are we going to see him ramp it up a gear a little bit and just really try and close this one out hopefully so hopefully so i mean space station lost that off of the back of winning sorry losing multiple gunfights to members of ogles who were being way too aggressive just peaking everything, but it works sometimes. It works when you've been playing a certain way for a very long time. It does work, but Space Station have recognized now, okay, this is how we want to play. We'll play like this. We're just going to play Blackbeard, and we're going to put Bosco on it, and we're going to destroy anyone who tries to peek it. And we'll see how that's going to work out for them. I'm confident just because it's Bosco, and it's a Blackbeard, and it's Coastline, but I'm also kind of weary because, you know, Yeti has proven himself quite a number of times on these peaks, and... You know, he's been doing fairly well with it, but he's actually not playing on the Eagle, which is surprising. Bomb has been located. Yeah, it really is a little bit surprising. We've seen Acid doing some great work on Legion. And we've seen, I mean, they've not brought a mirror this time, so there is a slight variation in the setup. Um, but it, I'm not sure how much control SSG have actually got upstairs. Shallow there just brute forcing his way in and losing his life, uh, being downed in the process. Redeemer is actually getting the plant down, and it will 
day. Oh no, he has to come off it. Yeti is going to peek out and confirm the kill onto Shala, but Rampy there misses his shots, and Yeti and Maman are able to pick up a kill apiece. It's now all down to Bosco and thinking, hey, the diffuser is on the floor in the doorway. It's not looking too good at this point. My man's going to pick up the kill onto Thinking Nade Bosco. Is he going to be able to put the shield to this much work with only a minute left on the clock in a one versus five situation? The diffuser is not in hand. It's going to be being guarded very, very closely at this point. And Orglis have got no business peeking anything here. They really don't need to at this stage. Toxic Bay comes out. That's going to deny another 15 to 20 seconds of the timer. And there's not a lot of time left on that at all. 30 seconds or so left on the clock. Bosco's left with no real option here. Um, he's going to be receiving some pretty heavy shots. Doesn't quite manage to make anything stick. Yes, he getting his kill onto Bosco. Is this the Orglis comeback? This is really going to be insanely frustrating for Space Station because Orglis at this point... They don't have anything to lose. They can just start playing insanely aggressively and it's a match point. They're one round away. But now August have really started to close the gap. Now they can start playing a little bit more conservatively and they rightfully should at this point just because, you know, Space is going to expect that. But then again, it's been working for them. It's been working. It's the only defensive rounds they've been able to find are when they've been super aggressive and just trying to run out and peek everything. Because space stations seem to think they're still in a regular game when they're not. This is a Thunderdome game. It's, it's just so back and forth. It's You can tell that both teams really, really want it at this stage. Um, we've seen Blue Bar twice this evening. It's been won both times by the attackers. So that's that's one apiece. So August have won it on attack once and SSG have won it on attack once. Um, I think, you know, the time that August won it, they really took a lot of initiative. Yeti busted in, got a 3k. I'm not sure what they're going to have to do here, but this has got to be... The, this This is a really big round for SSG, because as soon as, the, as soon as you lose this one, you're then looking at, we need to win the next one to not go to OT. Yeah. So, there's a lot of pressure on this round to win it, because the next round, they really need to Attackers win that, otherwise it goes to OT, and all of a sudden it's, it's, it could be anybody. So I th I'd like to see him take a little bit more time in the setup this time, and just have a very... Because last time they just, you know, they that, 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 that last like, attack on the Kitchen, they just ran in. Yeah. And the last attack on VIP before that, sorry, on, uh, on Penthouse 3 VIP before that, they just ran in again. And uh, they've, they've proven that they can do really good executes tonight. I just want to see them deploy the utility in such a way that it's going to allow them to do so. I feel like Space Station are kind of scrambling at the moment with the fact that they're rotating their roster around so much yeah. when previously we haven't really seen them pull out anything different, well, to a certain extent, but they're really looking to close out this round and they're pulling out everything they can for this, they're pulling out so many different rosters. Maybe this will work for them, maybe it won't. I'm interested, I'm intrigued to find out how this team is going to get deployed, mostly because there's no Jaeger from the defense. Yeah, there's plenty of potential there with Thinking Nade with his uh, frag grenades. And obviously, like you say, the Ying as well. If, if they are going to go for like the brute force into sight approach, Ying is probably one of the better operators to bring for that because it can provide a lot of shock and awe in doing so. Um, and if Yeti's going to be playing up here in billiards and they're not going to want to deal with that all too directly or they're going to want to use the Ying to deal with that very directly and um, Yeti they're going to get a nice rotation hole opened up by one of his fellow teammates and that's going to allow him to get back down into the safety of the blue bar the safety of the blue bar indeed you should be safe and sound in sunrise now just holding down the very same angle that he was holding when he got his 3k on the attack so this is very interesting clearly a very powerful angle for Yeti to play Olgos looking pretty heavily in control right now but they're playing nowhere near as aggressive as they was were before. I'm wondering if Space Station have started to catch up here because they seem to be moving awfully slowly. I just think they're at the point now where they don't really want to make any mistakes. They've, they've got a bit of time to play with in that they don't need to be rushing things like they have in the past two rounds. The control that they've got at this point is relatively decent. Thinking Nade's got a lot of upstairs open. He's not got too much of a concern. 
I think that Mute maybe have an, has a Nitro Cell in his pocket, so he's going to want to be very wary of that and keep on the move. Um, but it's not like there's a Pulse plane underneath and he's going to have to really worry too much about that. And the push now, he's going to def... Oh, that's a big kill to take out there. Thinking they're going to get that kill onto Yeti. So, you know, Yeti's been doing great work with the ACOG and really very good work on Rook especially. So to be able to take him out from above is pretty big at this point. The Yings are going to come out and thinking it is going to be able to watch upstairs as well. Well, Chala is going to go in and the Fuse is going to go down. He's going to run away, actually. I'm not sure quite why. Cray gets a kill. Crazy, sorry, gets a kill onto Ramp. He thinks he made a Bosco. Picking a one apiece. Acid gets a nice kill there onto Bosco. Eight seconds left on the clock. There is not a lot of time. Acid's going to peek onto Charlotte. And that's the Diffuser going to be down, but not planted. Is Redeemer planting this Diffuser? Thinking they picking up the kill onto Maman. Acid picking up the kill onto Thinking they The Diffuse is going down. Redeemer has to come off it. Acid is going to get that kill. And that is going to be a great pick, a great round. Acid's played out of his skin there. He's done fantastically. Just stop showboating and get the defuse, please. How does that happen? <laughs> How do you lose that? It was a 4v2 space station, please! You need to go on a trip in your favorite rocket ship, and it's just not happening right now. It was a 4v2. That was so close. It was in match point, and there we go. Acid just testing out his C key, very rightly so. Because he just clutched that, he won four gunfights in a row, and he completely brought it in. Space Station are going to be very frustrated after that, because that was probably one of their better attacks since they started losing rounds on their attacks. They, they did a really good execute, but I, I didn't see why Shala ran out. You know, so there initially... Was a, there was a shotgun kill that happened, and I think that he got a bit afraid that... He's going to try and put this diffuser down. And he's going to start getting pushed out. Mm. Because really, where their execute came down is their candelas went out. But that's that's momentum based, right? If you're not pushing off of that and then something goes into your line, then you kind of like yeah. have to reposition Defenders yourself. Protect your bombs from being so by maybe, maybe it was a mistake. Maybe you should have just took the plant. But at that point, uh, I don't know. Could have been potentially devastating. I just think they should have just killed, killed the man. Just kill him. He was right there, it was a 4v2, they could have refragged him, and he just went all, again, pear-shaped. I mean, you can't take it away from Acid, Acid came and clutched there, yeah, really. Yeah, Acid did insanely well to get as many kills as he did, and to clutch in not just that situation, but into the whole match situation right now, where tens of pressure is going on, you really have to give it to him. But, we're still on match point, Orglus are looking to bring this into overtime. How excited on a scale of one to ten do you think Orglus are right now? Because this is this is pretty close for them. Maybe they're really calm. Maybe we're just we're completely misjudging the situation, and they're just like, oh, this is just like ranked. It's really fun. I think there's got to be a level of excitement that comes into this because they've done so well to bring this back. This looked like a really clear-cut map. I know that Yeti can get very very passionate about this game at times, so he's got to be tripping right now. And yeah, he's like. You can see it in his mouse movement, so he's definitely on one right now. But looking looking really good for August right now because they're they're just taking rounds, they're taking these W's, they're handing out the L's, and Space Station just don't have an answer for it right now. They've tried pretty much everything in that arsenal, it seems, as they're going back to the Ying strategy. But this time there's a Jaeger. Yeah, and that's something that was certainly missing last time. Although, the put, like you say, the push off the Ying didn't really come to anything because as soon as Shallow pushed in, he pushed out again and the Ying was then rendered pretty much useless. Crazy there is going to fall. Rampy picking up that opening kill. That could be pretty big at this stage. Minute or so gone off the clock and Rampy's now got himself good control of Sunrise. So he's, uh, he's well established at this point. I think Crazy there is... He's kind of just roaming for a kill, maybe, or maybe a little bit of information as to where the push is coming. But ultimately, he's not got like a really, you know, he's not really lost out on anything there. That's just a, a gunfight that he could have, either, either guy would have won it and it wouldn't have got traded back just because of the way that it was being pushed. But this is a nice angle that Yeti's holding from Billiards all the way through onto Hall of Fame door. Um, but he's, you know, he's going to rotate off that just ever so slightly and maybe put himself in a bit of a better position to get a kill maybe onto the window or again just repositioning himself getting ready for this push because it is certainly going to start coming now with about a minute left on the clock 
Yeah, it should start going down indeed. And Yeti playing this still very aggressively, but it is a 5v4. Yeti getting so aggressive, but he doesn't get the kill just yet. And he's getting pushed. Oh my god, how does Yeti get out of that situation? He just gets all the way back. The smokes go down to cover him. This is beautiful from Orglus. And just Yeti getting out of that. SSG just lose a massive opportunity to shut down one of the most powerful fraggers coming out from Orglus right now. They have to move up. They have to start going for execute. They do have a one-man advantage going in here. So it's still looking very, very good indeed. Yeti just holding down this very nice angle. Candelas are going to start going out. The push is coming down from Space Station. More Candelas go out. Yeti's completely blinded. They need to capitalize on this and thinking they will do exactly that. My man goes down. Charlo moves all the way in to go for the plant. This is looking very, very good for Space Station to try and secure the round now. And now it's a 3v5. Yeti's taking increased damage. He's got to go big here. But oh no, he won't be able to get the kill. It's all down to Brian all of a sudden. There's a flurry of kills. It's a massacre right now for Orglas. Brian's got to find four. He's got his hippo diffuser as well. He's running out of time. He tries to peek around, but Bosco takes him down. And there we go. Space Station are going on a trip in their favorite rocket ship. They will be heading to Montreal. Beautiful rounds coming up from Space Station. Eventually clutching it through, taking the series two to one, taking the map seven to five. They're taking Montreal by storm. We even get the, the nice Thatcher Elite there. That's why Bosco brought From that. Bosco yeah. as, the, uh, as the animation there to close things out. But you can see there from the scoreboard what, what a serious game that was. Um, frags coming out from absolutely everybody. Um, Bosco thinking Aiden Rampy all really heavily contributing um, to that victory. But GG's to Space Station. Um, they did a fantastic job there. I think they made it a little bit harder than they maybe needed to. But They're just having the drama. It's just trying to make it. It's make it a making show. it a good conversation. Yeah. But you know, you really can't take anything away from the August guys. You've got to feel for them. They've got to within one round of OT, and it really could have gone either way at most points. It was only the adaptation from space uh, from space station yeah. of bringing the Ying that caused them to be able to win that. Because if you know, if you notice, they pushed it exactly the same as they pushed the previous penthouse all through Hall of Fame door with. Two exceptions. Bosco was playing underneath and then rotated onto Black Stairs, and the Ying allowed them to be able to, you know, the Ying was deployed to allow them to push in, um, and that's ultimately what won them it, the adaptation. But fantastic game from Space Station and Orglus. And I'm sure Intera can <laughs> relax now. Rest easy. He doesn't have to drink any milk on stream, although one day we'd definitely like to see that happen, <laughs> but it's not going to happen just yet. Space Station will take the series 2-1. to one. They will be your victors of the Grand Finals to qualify. They will be going to Montreal next month, and they will be playing for... What's the price pool out there? Something over a million dollars now. That's a just lot of Mulan. That's a lot of green. That should be very good indeed. We're going to have an interview, actually, at the moment, shortly, with one of the winning members from Space Station Gaming. That'll be coming up in just a few moments for you guys. What do we think of that series? That was incredible. It was, it was everything that we wanted it to be. There was the drama. You know, I mean, the Rise Nation in all this game wasn't so clear-cut either. No. Um, so that was an interesting one to sort of lead us into the drama that unfolded uh, with the three-map saga, if you will, yeah. of August versus SSG. Definitely. So, yeah, incredible series coming out there and uh, really well played from August. Nothing to downplay from them. They are a pro league team. They've been doing very well for themselves recently and uh, it's no easy task to take on one of the better teams in North America as of recent history and come out in such a close scoreline in such an important game. Especially with how many games and how many rounds August have played back to back today. Yeah. Like, they've been grinding. You know, they've played a big game against Ry uh, Rise, which yeah. they'll have no doubt practiced for beforehand. Yeah. You know, in terms of getting warm, getting on as a team, all having a couple of games and getting together. So they've played that. They've then played against Rise, and then they've gone on and played against Space Station as well. It just, they've really put the work in tonight. And, I, you know, you can't help but take your hat off to them and say, you know, well done, guys. You've done a fantastic job. And it just, it was so close on the night. Yeah, and uh, I'm sure Orglus, they put up a good fight. But unfortunately, the score line, which most people were expecting, did go through. But uh, maybe not quite in the way that other people were expecting. It was an insanely close yeah. game. And as you said, that very easily could have gone either way. There were a few mistakes from both sides. That's natural. Definitely. It's definitely natural. I think Space Station, towards the end there, definitely couldn't deal with a completely different play style of Orglus. They completely changed everything up on match point. And 
all of a sudden Space Station, they start changing up, they start trying to adapt as quickly as possible, things just started to not work, and it seemed like things were going to start crumbling at any second. I think you're right, it was the it was at the point where SSG got to match point, and they kind of, you know, Oculus kind of got to the point where they were like, we've got nothing to lose, we're going to play just however we want, and that made them then very unpredictable, and, you know, playing like you've got nothing to lose can be a very dangerous thing to do for your opponent, because they're not too sure on how to do that. Um, so it was good at good at good adaptation from Definitely. SSG to be able to deal with that on the fly. But it's a good job they had a couple of rounds, ready, you know, in the bank to be able to do that with. Well, talking about SSG and their victory, we are going to have an interview coming up right now. It's going to be Lycan. Lycan, how are you doing tonight? I'm sure you're feeling very, very happy after that win. Yeah, I'm good. Thank you very much. How do you feel coming out of that? How do the guys feel? Uh, I mean, like, this was really big for us, to be honest. Uh, when we went to Sweden, uh, we didn't really expect to get beat by Penta, and um, I think we thought we had it more than we did, and they played a great game. So this whole tournament for us has been about proving to ourselves, like, that we should have already been there. So Do you want to very, talk a little bit excited. about um, earlier in this tournament as well, where you faced 92 Dream Team? How, how was that for a match for you? Because that was your first matchup of the Stage 2 part. And it was a much closer game than I think other people would have predicted. Yeah, I'm, if anyone from 92 Dream Team's watching, I've been saying this a couple of times, but I don't know if they've heard me say it yet, but thank you very much. Uh, when, <laughs> when, they, when they beat us on Consulate, it, it woke us up big time, and um, we all got our shit together, and we started working more as a team. We kind of had phases of this team, and when they did that to us, we considered ourselves back at pre-Sweden, and then we just rolled through the rest of the tournament. Definitely. Really well played by you guys to completely roll over. You did play Orglus previously in the tournament. You did knock them down into the lower bracket. What were you expecting? And did those same expectations come to fruition when you actually played them? Wow, well, we weren't supposed to play them that early, but I'm not going to go on to that on stream. Um, but it did cause us the second time we came around to have to like change up our bands because we didn't want to play them on the same maps. So that's what made uh, Oregon go through. We knew they were a really good Oregon team because they were able to beat EG on Oregon. So if you can beat EG on Oregon, obviously it's really hard to deal with. We almost did it. Uh, we weren't able to make it through. So, yeah, I, I mean, I, I think we're, we expected this to kind of be the way it was. Like, like came, it came down. If we got Oregon, that would have been really cool. But we didn't. You know, it's, it is what it is. What do you think about the book ban that came through on Clubhouse? Was that expected from you guys? The, um, I don't know. I, I, I don't want to like bash it, but like basically when they banned Buck, like I can't even tell you how happy Thinking Nate was. Like I, I don't know. Buck's like one of those things where you have to play, but the gun sucks. And so when like you ban it, the Buck players like yes, <laughs> let's go. So Nate was excited about it. It didn't really affect us at all. I don't think I, I'm not sure why they did it, but I'm sure like they had a good reason for it. Yeah, and. They, you stormed through that map quite well. And uh, going into the second map, though, Oregon, you say that you maybe weren't so confident going against them. You knew they were a good Oregon team. So then we go to, to our Asida. Things were looking very, very good for you early on. What happened? Um, well, basically, they, they knew, like, if they lost one more round, it was over. So you kind of it kind of felt like they just kind of said, you know, Whatever happens, happens. Everyone grab an ACOG and get aggressive. Try to like get picks early, kind of like do that. And um, I think another part of it, honestly, is we're not used to. We're having like an issue, like actually clutching at the end. Like we get all the way to the end of the tournament and then we'll lose. So like we're still a young team and we have like a lot of young players that haven't gone to a lot of lands. So we're still working on like that final round like sealing the deal so it was probably a combination between those two things that it, that caused it there was a lot of times you know, throughout the games um, i know it's something that august wasn't quite doing that you guys were doing a little bit better adaptation changing up your lineup changing up your setups when things weren't working how does that process work are these things that you've tried on before and people just know what to do is it something that you're calling out is it something that someone from the team is calling out guide us through that process well, it's something that Redeemer and Bosca mostly are calling out. It's things that I call out in practice, and they, like, learn, like, how I want them to play. Um, but, yeah, pretty much, like, my big motto for them is mix it up. I like to tell them all the time, like, 
even though like this is this is your default strat but like once you see what they're doing like you can completely change it into something different so definitely well, that's what they just, just about yeah. all we have time for in this interview anything to close out this anything you want to say to the fans out there uh, sh thanks everyone for showing up and watching and appreciate it and um, yeah we're excited by invite thank you very much well, thank you like and I'll see you there in person I'm sure you guys will do great and invite have a good day all right thanks so there we have it space station will take the series 2-1 against Oglas they will be your North American champions what an incredible series what an incredible play